In the build phase, you have a chance to relax, study the map, and prepare for the next wave of enemies, while in the combat phase is where all the game mechanics really come together. Your defense alone will not be enough, and you need to react quickly and be aware of the flow of enemies to defend and return your crystals. I prefer to meticulously maintain and upgrade my defenses quickly, so they can take care of enemy attackers while I gather resources and continue to bolster my defenses. Others prefer to use their heroes, their attacks, and their skills to aggro enemies away from their defenses and take care of them themselves. That said, using a combination of your hero and their defenses is essential to success. Your attacks themselves nor your defenses alone are enough to stop enemies from destroying the Eternia Crystals. How you fight also depends on whether you're playing solo or cooperatively. If you're a solo apprentice and your towers are falling, you could activate your overcharge ability to quickly repair them. If you're playing co-op, you could call over a squire player to use his block ability to defend while you rebuild your defenses. Or you could call over a monk to help boost your defenses attack and HP. Or a huntress to sneak behind enemy lines and thin out the crowd while you work. Goblins, orcs, and dark elf archers aren't the only enemies you'll be facing. In addition, you'll also be facing enemies that ignore defenses and come straight for your hero as well as enemies that can fly over defenses and head straight for your crystals. There are also mini-bosses and bosses which provide a special challenge and drop unique loot. During these parts of combat, you'll have to focus on defending your returning crystals from normal enemies while also defeating a malicious boss with unique mechanics and attacks.